guys, Jonathan with JonathanWaltersPhotographer.com. Today I'm going to be doing a quick edit showing you how to remove shadows off of somebody's face if they happen to get in an image. There we go. I'm going to open up. Uh, I'm going to try to tell you all the short commands I do if I happen to do something uh, that I don't click on. Um, and I'm going to try to make this pretty basic for you. Um, I'm not going to get into all the frequency separation. Uh, this is the image that we're looking at, by the way. It's an awesome pose. It just looks really good. Great light. Except for this light that fell on the person's face. It's one of those things, sometimes it just happens in images, so not a huge issue. But we are going to be fixing this today, and I'm going to show you the most basic way that I know how to fix this for you. Um, that way, and you can keep up and try this, and it will work in just about every situation. Um... First thing I'm going to do is actually make a copy of this. I never mess with the background layer, so I always have the original. Make a copy. You just hit Command-J, and then you're going to have a copy. From here, now I'm working with a copy. If I turn it off or on, it's the same thing. I'm just working on the top layer, and that's where you should be working as well. From here, I'm actually going to make a new layer. Um, just click on the New Layer button over here. And this is just a regular layer. Everything's the same. Then I'm going to go over here to Clone Stamp Tool. It uh, looks like a little stamp. Um, the real important part on this is to make sure that all layers is selected as your sample layer on the top. So uh, make sure that that's selected. That way it actually goes to the layers below it. Um, current and below would work on this one because it would be the blank layer that we're on and the one below it. Um, the one, all of them are the same thing. So uh, this works. So what we're going to do is we're going to sample from this part of his head to fill in this part that is got the shadow on it. We're going to do that all the way down, um, and we're going to do that with the nose, eye, and uh, we're going to try to retain most of the information to make it look as natural as possible. So, uh, And I have also been asked to remove this thread from his shirt, which I will show you how to do that as well. Um, a, a lot of people might try to go through here with the uh, clone tool, which... Um, won't work for something like this very well because there is texture to the head and it's texture that if you move it it does that and it looks bad it looks like something happened like a scar or something so that's going to be really hard to do on something that's got specific detail texture like this um so i just hit command z there to back up and it'll take me one step back um so what i'm going to do here i'm going to go back to my clone stamp tool now i'm going to get a brush as you can see that is a, a soft brush that is big enough to cover the line of the shadow that we're wanting to do it by itself, or, or pretty close, um, so I can get a good sample of this. There is also this spot too in the shadow. Uh, we want to make sure we get that out of there as well. So I'm going to size up my brush. Um, if you double click on your computer wherever your brush is, it will let you uh, get uh, the different sizes and stuff instead of having to do this and go up here and change it. So um, I'm going to get a different size. I'm going to pull it down back in the 80s. Uh, let's see. It's a good size right there. And what I'm going to do, in saying that, because I, I haven't selected a sample layer yet, I was just clicking off the menu. So how to select a sample layer on this is you just hit Option or Alt, and it comes up a little bullseye, and you just click. You now have your sample layer, and if you go over, you can see it actually holds the information. Wherever you start on this is your starting point of where it will sample from whenever you're originally up here. So you can see my sample never changes. So what I want to do, you can hear my dog Buster in the background, what I want to do is take this and just start painting over the shadow. And because they, this is a large shadow, and I, I can go back a little bit too, that's why we're on a new layer. I'm going to go all the way back to that other shadow, and you can see where that little crosshairs is, is where it's pulling from. So I can actually go right here now, and sample, and paint some more. And I'm going to show you why we're on a new layer here in just a second. From right here, it looks absolutely terrible, but if you see it by itself, you see we have everything, um, almost everything covered. I'm going to take one more sample from right here, and I'm going to cover that spot. One more sample again, and I'm going to cover that spot. Now what I'm going to do, this is where it starts coming together. Right here it looks terrible. This doesn't look like a usable image or usable cover-up at all. This is where you start blending it together. So what I'm going to do is grab my eraser tool, 
and I'm going to make sure my I have a circular brush and my hardness is down to 0%. This will give me a really big feather on the end of the brush, and I want a big brush, so something much larger than what we're actually going to be doing, what we're actually going to be erasing. And here, you go around the edges, start out, and click and just drag. You're going to see that second black line there start to fade and start to disappear. This will actually is what blends it together, and I know that the other shadow is still a ways over, so I can move around quite a bit. I want to get that paint that I put on there out of the hair. And if you go a little too far like that, you can you can command Z. Should pick up every now and then, especially when you're erasing this big of an area. That way, in case you do what I just did again, you can just pick up your uh, brush, hit command Z, and go back to where you were. So I can lower the opacity a little on this to see where I'm actually erasing to or where I want to stay from. And to lower the opacity, you just drag backwards on the opacity brush or pull it back and forward, and that will show you what layer you're actually working on. Down here in his eyebrow, there's a little bit. I'm going to use a smaller brush because I don't want to lose it. There's actually no hair where it is, but if I go too far up, the shadow is actually visible in the eye. Um, so that's that part of it. So this is going to be the first uh, cover-up of the line. This is what it looks like before. That's what it looks like after. And if we zoom out to this, to where you're actually looking at the image, um, it's, uh, it looks pretty good. But what we're going to do is we're going to go in here. There's a little bit of darkness where it doesn't look like believable fall off. I'm going to add a new layer, go to my brush, and take the flow down it. From, it'll start out at 100. Take it down to about like 5 to 10%, somewhere in there. And go to a brush. Make sure you have a super soft brush. And uh, just, just a normal size somewhere in there that we're going to be coloring. Um, and what we're going to do is hit Option, and that's going to let you sample colors. Sample the color right next to the shadow that's not working for you. And this is going to let you paint on. You don't want to do this too much because this is painting over the top of the texture. If you're not doing a frequency separation or where you separate the frequency from the colors, you, you want to be careful doing it this way. What I do, though, is I actually color like that. And then I pull down the opacity on the layer. And this will let me pull it down to where it doesn't exist and slowly move it back to where I get a believable fall off shadow. Let's see, I might even go a little bit lighter on that. And again, whenever you use a lower flow, you gotta it's sort of like thinking about how ink comes out of a pen. You can like stack it up, or if you're using a paintbrush, you stack up the paint. Um, rather than opacity, it's just a set. Thickness, flow, with the same click, the more you go over it, the uh, the thicker the paint goes on it. So, I want to be able to see the texture and get a believable fall off. And it's probably going to be right around there. And I didn't do too much to it to get that, so that's where I'm at on that. I'm going to merge these down. There's no reason to have them on separate layers now. And that is the cover-up for the first shadow. Um, I can actually go up here with the heel brush, and all I did on that is, there's a little bit of shadow right there, all I did was pull it out of his hair. I can stay on the same layer, and this will just, sometimes you got to work it a little bit. There you go. So now the shadow's out of his hair, too. Um, anything that's got really intricate details, it's good to use the uh, the healing brush tool like his hair because it will take it out like that. Um, again, there's too much texture on the skin to do it that same way. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the face like this. Um, I am going to do a uh, new layer for every part of it that I do. That way I can work individually on these. Um, let's see. And again, I don't think we're going to pull, pull into a spot that has too much extra textures uh, if we do so something like this again I'll do the same thing to where I can see it by itself and see where I'm actually working at I want to get a bigger brush just pull the colors out of his eyelashes again this isn't the 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 Mo the most effective way to do this, this is just the way that I like to do it. I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to do the same thing I did over here where I painted over the, the low shadows um, 
let me see where they're at. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes. So just go in here and make sure my flow is still down low. And I'm just going to paint over that part of his eyebrow. So you can see uh, there's a little bit of a shadow there. Pull back just a little on that part. And that, that wasn't much. It just covers up a little bit of that. Uh, I think that looks... Let me pull back. And the key to the editing is to make sure that it looks believable. Um, you don't want to go in here and edit something so amazingly perfect that it doesn't look believable. So now we've got this sort of um, look to it where there's this hard line, hard shadow. I'm going to use another layer. And you can name all these layers if you need to to keep up with them. And I'm just going to make a really soft brush with a really low flow. And I'm going to blend these together doing that. This is how I get rid of a lot of my uh, flash marks on people's faces uh, is doing that. So I'm going to pull down the opacity on that. And you can see the difference that that makes. Come back in here on this side of it with a large brush with a low softness. And I'm just doing this to help mesh it together a little bit more and to see that. I'm hitting Command Z to do a before and after. It's kind of a cheat way that I do on it. So I've got that. I'm going to make a harder brush to get all that out of his eyebrows. So his forehead is done. Let's see. I can actually do this up here. Um, I just saw a couple spots up here. And again, this isn't something that's going to be done instantly. Uh, you want to I want to work with it. Every image is different too. I've never worked on this image before. It's just something somebody had posted on a group and uh, wanted some help removing the lines from his head. And that would be, let me get a little closer there. I'm going to use a low flow on the eraser on this because I got it on the same layer as the other one. And this will let me pull some of that off of there. See, what I'm looking at and trying to make sure that it isn't noticeable is that there's these little bitty, which I see, black marks right there. And, um, that's what I'm trying to make sure isn't too apparent. It's kind of hard to see. I'll zoom out a little bit to see it. So I'll just get a lighter one. Keep in mind I'm on a super low flow right now, so it's not going to do too much. i got to scribble quite a bit to get anything out of that. Cool. And again, this isn't the only way to do this. This isn't probably even the right way to do this. But uh, it is a way that works. It is a way that gets this done, especially if you're you're just looking. That's what I can do. Especially if you're just looking to get this done. All I'm doing is erasing these lines. Again, I, I'm super nitpicky on stuff like this. And uh, you can see that's that's his head. You're going to repeat those same steps. I'm going to show you without it and with it. And essentially that's what it looks like. If there's any like noticeable creases or anything like that, like for instance, right here, the glare on this side doesn't match the glare on this side. That's an easy fix. You go to the layer that has the, uh, the cover up on it and use a low flow soft brush and go over that area and just even up the glare and a lot of this might seem counterintuitive or uh, seem like you're kinda of going over the same area again but it's really just to try to make the light look like it's hitting how it would really be hitting if it were just a fall on his head naturally